Are you feeling overwhelmed with tests? Do you feel like you don't know what to use, end-to-end testing, unit testing, what to test first or how to set up it at all? I worked with front-end teams who had thousands of tests and still have critical bugs and other teams who barely wrote any tests and were moving with confidence. So the difference is not only how many tests you are writing, it is what you test and when. So by the end of this video you will learn the simple priority framework that you can use in order to understand what you need to test and implement your project with confidence. And the main problem that most companies have they don't test at all. They don't even have the testing set up. And do you know how many developers will write tests if there is no testing set up on which you can run your tests? The answer is zero. Nobody will start setting up the testing environment when it is not there. It takes time and must be done as a separate ticket, which actually means if in your company you don't have set up, nobody will write tests. And this is an important point. If you have a setup, people might write tests. And this is already better than nothing. The second important question is how much we need to test. Do we need 100% coverage of all our lines of code? No, we don't. So how much is too much from the beginning? I highly recommend to always start with end-to-end -end testing. Why is that? Because it is cheap. You don't really need to know the project at all. You can just with end-to-end -end testing cover the basic flow of the user in your application. At the bare minimum you want to cover authentication and payments, these are most important parts. And this is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp. We are testing all our code and covering exactly parts that are needed with tests. I had real experience in the company where in two days we covered a flow of the user through the whole form, which was like 10 different pages and we eliminated 80% of bugs that we had before that. So it was that cheap. So you start with end-to-end -end testing and only with happy path, you must make sure that your application is working for the user at any moment. You don't test any edge cases, you don't test components, and you don't trade any unit tests. This is your first step. It might be for your project that it is already enough, your project doesn't get a lot of bugs and you can simply move forward with the development. But most projects want something more. They want to cover their logic or at least business logic with tests. And it makes a lot of sense because in every project we have lots of cases even in a single feature. And there are two different cases. First of all, we want to cover our business logic with tests and secondly, by writing tests while coding we can simplify testing all possible scenarios in your specific feature. I am not saying that you need to write tests before you write code, but writing tests really often simplifies testing your feature and you avoid doing that manually in the browser. So we start here with unit testing. It obviously depends on your framework, but the idea is the same. We are testing business logic, it will be some utility functions or helpers which are used everywhere. All data transformations that you are doing you want to also cover with tests. Additionally to that, if you use some state, for example Redux, you also want to cover it with tests, because it is relatively simple. You just have an object, and typically your function, like a reducer, changes your state somehow. And you just check how your state was changed after specific function. This is how you test all your business logic. It is more expensive than end-to-end -end testing, but much easier to test than components, because you typically don't have a lot of dependencies there. These first two steps, end-to-end -end testing and business logic testing, are a must. I highly recommend to do that. The next step would be to test your components or your view layer, and I would say this is the next step, but it is more optional. You might already be on the level when you are not getting a lot of bugs and you feel comfortable implementing new features. But if you want to go deeper, it is time to test your components. Typically you will test values in your components and forms and all the view logic that you have. So it is about testing your props, testing what component is rendered or how it reacts on different events. And here is one important question. We can test component in isolation or we can test a tree of components. 
like for example your root component of the application and five components inside. A lot of people like to test every single component in isolation because it is simpler, but I prefer to test the whole tree of components. Why is that? Because then you are not testing in isolation, you are testing your application how it is working for the user. It might be trickier to test like this because you don't have a single component but a tree of components, but you will eliminate more bugs this way. And again, I am not against testing component in isolation, you can do that if you need more granular testing. And here for sure you have a question why I didn't say anything about testing services with API. And typically I don't want to test this part because we are using some library like Axios or for example a HTTP client in Angular to make our request. This code typically is quite simple if we are not talking about data transformations and we can test them separately from fetching data, but from my experience testing requests doesn't bring a lot of benefit. Sure, you can have some retry mechanisms and when your API calls are getting really difficult, you might want to test them, but overall it is not a place which breaks really often. And now is a super important point, what you should not test. And a lot of people for some reason think that their tests must mirror their code. And this is completely wrong because they are trying to test all the values. And you don't want to test values with your tests, you want to test behaviors. This is why if you simply read every single value in your component, it doesn't make sense. You want to test your behavior, so what happens in your component. This is why it doesn't make any sense to test, for example, libraries that you are using in your application. They typically must be tested on their own. And you don't want to test presentational components. It is just styling and markup. If it doesn't have any logic, why you are spending time on testing it? So you need to focus your energy on testing your business logic, which is unique to your application. So let's sum this up. What priority do you have? First of all, end-to-end -end testing, or we can name it smoke testing, just a happy path to know that our application is not crashing and is working. Then we start covering business logic to understand that it is solid. After that we can test our components to know that they are reliable and these building blocks are working exactly how user expects them to work. And additionally to that you must always remember that you should not test only happy path, but also different possible scenarios. And if you want to learn how to implement testing correctly on real examples on a senior level, I have a front-end bootcamp for you, which will bring you from middle developer to senior developer, and all code that we are writing inside is covered with tests in the correct way. And you can find the link to the bootcamp in the description under the video.